We come across a system where we have a high superheated vapor, we have a starved evaporator coil, low subcooled liquid, we have a starved condensing coil. We're starved inside, we're starved outside, we're starved of refrigerant. The system doesn't have enough refrigerant in it. So the next thing is, earth in mind, we need to be thinking, we need to find the leak and fix it. This should be our first thought on our mind, but it doesn't mean that's what we have to exactly do. Now, if a system has over 50 pounds of refrigerant, the EPA has very specific laws on whether it's process refrigeration, commercial refrigeration, industrial or comfort cooling refrigeration. If the system is under 50 pounds of refrigerant, we do not have to, by law, fix that system. But ultimately, it's the customer's choice. There's a lot of technicians who want to put gas, go to the next call. And they make that call for themselves. They make that choice for themselves. They take it away from the homeowner. And the catch is, it's the homeowner's decision. People get very upset when I'm saying, hey, if you have a system that's low in charge, you need to be thinking there's a leak. It doesn't mean you have to fix that leak. On the other hand, it is the right thing to do to give that to the homeowner. Now, a lot of homeowners you may find in your experience just want the cheapest option, add refrigerant and go, but it is their decision and not all homeowners think the same. A lot of homeowners now are very conscious of the environment. They know that that refrigerant is an environmental issue and when that refrigerant is leaking out, they want it fixed. That's a big issue for them. Others want the stability. They want to know that this system is not going to leak all of its refrigerant out in the middle of summer on the hottest day on a weekend when it's overtime. They got all their family and friends in and now all of a sudden the system decides to die and everybody's sweating and miserable in the house. So knowing that they can have that system fixed and have it working dependably is a big deal to them. Other people, it's going to be the financial side of it. Understanding their electric bill could go up because the system starts running low on refrigerant charge or the risk of damaging a compressor. When the system runs low in refrigerant, there's not as much refrigerant to cool the compressor. Compressor overheats and you have compressor failure. So the decision belongs, again, to that homeowner. So what I like to do when I go to a residential call and I find out that it's low in refrigerant, my first thought is, hey, there's a leak. Now, we know that most systems across the country are overcharged because it's magical unicorn juice and it just makes cold air. But we understand the refrigeration cycle. We know it's not that way. So what we do is we have some options. Me personally, what I've done in my career is I do a 10 minute complimentary leak search. And one of the things I'm looking for is any oil stains on the system. I'm looking for any oil stains here or there. And I grab my electronic leak detector and I shut the unit down. By shutting the unit down, it allows refrigerant to concentrate if it's leaking. Then I take my electronic leak detector and I just do a basic quick leak search. I look at the most common areas for it to be leaking, any piping that's crossing each other for leaks. I also go in the evaporator coil, do a quick leak search in the evaporator coil, and then around any of the connections. Also, the insulation that wraps around our line sets, I take my meter and I stick it just up inside that insulation. So if the line set's leaking, there's usually a concentration of refrigerant and my leak detector will pick it up just simply by putting it inside that insulation. I also want to check around these caps because these are very common and also our caps here. It's very common place for the leak. Sometimes there's a leak that's just as simple as a bad Schrader core is leaking and we need to put new valve caps on. I worked at one company that replaced valve caps every five years for their customers to make sure they didn't have any of those issues. But just simply doing that quick, complimentary, 10 minutes free to them leak search is very beneficial to me and also to the homeowner because now it gives me information. Information is valuable. With that information, I have options. Now let's do a first scenario. First scenario, we have a system that's over 10 years old and we had a leak inside that evaporator coil. So what I can do is go to the customer. Sir, ma'am, what we found is your system was low in refrigerant charge and that's why it's not cooling. Now refrigerant doesn't wear out, it only leaks out. I did a free complimentary leak search and I found out that your evaporator coil is leaking refrigerant. Now your system is over 10 years old, so we do have some options. One option we can do is we can simply add refrigerant and just see how long it lasts. It could leak out by the end of tonight or it could last for another year. I have no way of knowing, but that is one option. The next option we can do is we can come back and do an in-depth leak search and we can find out exactly where it's leaking from. There's multiple different levels of this leak search, but we go into depth looking at the condenser, the refrigerant lines, and the evaporator coil. The third option is we can get somebody out and it's free of charge. They're going to come out and give you a price on what a new system would be. And you can decide investing in the repairs or you can invest in that new piece of equipment. It's your house, your budget, your equipment. What would you like for me to do? And now the homeowner gets to decide what they want to do. So you are free and clear. Let's do another scenario. This system is only a few years old. We end up finding that evaporator coil refrigerant leak. What we now have is the same options. Sir, ma'am, I checked your system out. We found out that it was low in refrigerant charge. I did a complimentary 
quick leak search and it did find out we were leaking refrigerant in the evaporator coil. This system is most likely under warranty of the evaporator coil, but things like refrigerant, labor, those costs are not included with replacing that evaporator coil. Now we do have some options. We can simply add refrigerant, get you some cooling going on, and then we can see how long it's going to last. Another option is we can then check on the warranty of your system and give you a price on what it's going to take to replace that evaporator coil. And then a third option is we can do a full leak search and make sure that that's not the only place it's leaking. We can make sure it's not leaking anywhere else in that system. How would you like me to proceed? Now the customer gets to make that decision. If they just want to add refrigerant, that is 100% their decision. If they want to replace that evaporator coil and their warranty and go through that, whatever the thing is, it's their decision to make. Now you're free and clear. You make sure you document this information though, so that way it doesn't come back on you later. For example, the customer just wants to add refrigerant and they don't want to do any repairs. Now in a few days when all that refrigerant leaks out and they're mad about having to spend all that money on a refrigerant leak, now you can say, we did give you the option, this is what you chose to do, we're happy to come back out, do another diagnostic, and then we can move from there. That goes back to being on the homeowner, and that way you don't have to worry about it. Here's another scenario. We go to a system that's low in refrigerant charge, we do a quick little leak search, and we don't find anything. We don't find anything in the evaporator coil, nothing in the line sets, nothing in the condensing unit. So we go to the homeowner, we say, sir, ma'am, we checked your system, we found out it was low on refrigerant charge, and refrigerant doesn't wear out, it only leaks out. I did a quick complimentary leak search, and I didn't find a leak anywhere at this time, but we know that there's most likely going to be a leak somewhere. We do have some options. Option one is we can add refrigerant, hope for the best, see how long it lasts. There's no guarantees in that whatsoever. It could leak out tonight, or it could leak out over a couple of years. We have no way of knowing. Second option, we can come back and we can do an in-depth leak search. Now, we have different levels of this. It's going to cost this much money, but we can definitely find out if the leaks in the condensing coil, if the leaks in the evaporator coil, or if the refrigerant leaks in the line sets. From there, we can then give you a price what it would be to fix it. But that's what we're looking at just to find out where that leak is. We can also have a comfort advisor come out and give you a free estimate of what it would cost to replace the system. How would you like me to proceed? Again, the homeowner makes a decision. If they want that leak search done, you can then schedule that. You don't have to do it right that moment. You can schedule that. Add some refrigerant, get them cooling. You already have the date scheduled in. You come back and then you find that leak. Now you've taken the decision away from yourself and you've given it to the homeowner. And it's their house. It's their equipment. It's their money. It's their decision. But that's how I like to do it. Now everybody's different. Other companies different policies how they want to do it. But I found a 10 minute leak search. Me volunteering that time out has been beneficial for me. Most of the time. Every company has a different policy and procedures of how they want to follow through with leak searches. Me personally, I found that, that little 10 minute complimentary, I just give away my time to do that quick free leak search gives me very valuable information. If the customer decides they wanted to buy a new system, most companies give you a spiff or a bonus because the customer bought a new system on your recommendation. Now that money goes back and pays for that 10 minutes of time that I lost. Also, if the customer wants to come back and do a cool repair or do that leak search, I'm also getting paid to do that full leak search, so either way, I'm going to be compensated. Worst case scenario, the customer just wants me to add refrigerant to the system and be on my way. At least I know I've done my effort to look for a leak and generalize, find out most likely where it would be, and if I didn't find one, I really feel confident knowing it's probably not that big of a leak. So either way, it's been very beneficial for me, and if there's a leak, the customer's going to be calling you back sooner or later. So again, you want to make sure it's their decision. I've had many, many, many customers come to me because they got tired of the last company doing nothing but coming out and adding refrigerant to the system over and over and over. They didn't even give the customer the option. I ended up coming out there either selling a system, fixing the leak, whatever the problem is, and the customer is happy because now it's solved once and for all and they don't have to worry about it again. So it is the customer's decision. It's their money. Give them the choice. And now you've done the right thing, lost a few minutes of time possibly, but everybody's happy. If the system is over 50 pounds of refrigerant, it goes to the EPA rules and regulations. If it's ozone depleting or not, if it's industrial or process refrigeration, if it's comfort cooling or commercial refrigeration, there's many different factors of it that you have to follow the EPA guidelines. And the EPA rules could change. It could change later to where if it's under 50 pounds of refrigerant, you have to start fixing a leak. As of the time of this video, if it's under 50 pounds, the leak does not have to legally be repaired. Morally, it is the customer's decision.